Hello everyone and welcome to a detailed review of the new Nissan Altima, a trusty, spacious, comfortable and a no-nonsense mid-size sedan. So in today's video, we're going to be finding out everything in detail about this Altima. So this new Altima is offered in four different variants which is the S, the SV, then there is the SR and the SL version and the SR is basically a newer version that has been introduced in where there is also a turbocharger options that has been introduced I'm going to come to that so the particular model that I'm driving is the SL version but it's a turbocharged engine one so let's begin from the front so you get this new V-Motion design grille out here in this glossy black plastic and a new Nissan flat badging out here strips of chrome on either side and a relatively smoother bumper design out here there are these sort of plastic trims which are given then the meshed grill honeycomb structure but they don't do anything it's just for the design purposes that has been given and it sits pretty low in here when you come to these headlights this is a full led headlight cluster that you get there are also drls that are given out here in this c-shaped on both the sides and these DRLs also convert into turn signals but overall you get a much smoother design now on the new Altima now on the sides on this top variant you get 19 inch aluminum alloy rims whereas the base one starts off with the 16 inch and progresses towards 17 18 and these 19 inches at the bottom there's no skirting on anything but rather again smooth surface that has been given and when you come to the side mirrors you get power foldable side mirrors which are also power adjustable they also have the blind spot warning but it's on the frame on the inside there's also a turn signal that has been given and these are the body colored side mirrors at the bottom there's just normal plastic you get these keyless entry door handles and the door handles are all chromed out again that's for the top spec and you get this half chrome surround around these windows and then these extension of these tail lights which was also there on the previous generation the older ones so they've just carried on out here also a little bit more angular on this one in the back you get the same 19 inch aluminum rims and look at the length of this thing because it's super long like this driver door is super long and then eventually even the rear doors are so long and that also transforms into more interior space that you get on this new Altima. Now in the rear you get a completely halogen tail light cluster. I was expecting an LED tail light cluster because it's a top spec but yeah you get this halogen tail light cluster. The top bit is like a glossy black plastic that has been given. The Altima badging out here. The new Nissan logo in here the VC turbo so this is the one that I was talking about so you get a two liter turbocharged engine and in terms of the visibility it's, it's a bit restricted from the lower end which is what I find because there's this this bit where it's all raised up and then you see a far away kind of angle from the rear view but yeah you just have to get used to that a little bit at the bottom you get normal plastic this honeycomb structure out here with the reflectors on either side at the bottom there's this again body colored diffuser but it's just for aesthetic purposes or it's not like it's a functional one then there are these chrome twin exhaust tips that you get that fit actually pretty well in here again even in the back the design is pretty simplified that way and not like a busy line or too much that is going on in here some more bits of plastic normal yeah when you come to now when you come to the boot space gosh now when you come to the boot space you know to open the boot door there's a button given at the bottom and you are greeted to 450 liters of huge luggage space in the back there's this carpet lining on it there are also scuff plates given out here in plastic so that you don't damage your bumper and then there are some more tying hooks which are given out here but not too many but otherwise it's a relatively simple boot space that you get it's also pretty deep in here so there's a fair bit of lip out here so you have to put your luggage in and out it's going to be a little bit of a task but it sits quite well in here you can easily fit two big bags one medium-sized bag into this boot space and the bottom of this 
wood floor you would find a full size spare wheel that has been given with the same alloys and everything and the rear seats are foldable in a ratio of 60 to 40 and there are levers given out here so you pull them they're still covered in plastic by the way it's that new so when you pull that lever in order to open and fold down the seats though you have to go in the front and make these seats fall down now another problem is that there's this seat belt for the middle passenger that hangs in the middle so yeah you have to remove that first and then sort of utilize that entire boot space and when the rear seats are folded down you can load longer objects but i don't know in liters but you can definitely put a lot more longer objects in here there's just a bit of step that has been given and the seats don't completely fall down flat but there's a bit of a slope in there but anyways it's only for using like longer objects if you want to stuff in but otherwise the boot space itself without those seats folded down is quite ample on this thing and it's pretty nice and broad also in terms of its opening and order to close you just have to manually put this down now the inside of the new ultima also has a refreshed look so you find screens and newer designs and everything but let me start off with the material quality so you get soft touch material out here on the dashboard even out here there's soft touch with this white color stitching the door cards again have the soft touch material at the place where you're going to be resting hands that's also a soft touch material with the white color stitching the buttons and everything they have this glossy black plastic it's glittery glossy black plastic that you get out here you get this plastic trim that resembles like the wooden but it's yeah just the plastic trim so it's not the real wood that has been given then out here it's just normal plastic once you start going below the eye levels it's all plastic everywhere out here glossy black glittery one that has been given where your foot rests against this central console that's where it's got like soft touch material leather covered and this white color stitching again these seats are black color leather seats that you get the steering wheel is again leather covered so yeah bits and bobs out here when it's got good quality around on your eye levels but below that it's all like normal plastic that has been given now when you come to the driver's display you get two physical dials on both the sides and in the middle you get a seven inch digital driver's display and i'm actually glad that these dials are the physical ones i like that and in between that information can keep changing so that's uh, flexibility that you get but otherwise the dials remain fixed all the time and i like that now in order to change the information on the driver's display you get buttons on the left side of the steering wheel so the first view is your speed or if you want you can leave it blank then you go on the right side then you see your fuel economy then your variable compression turbo so you get to see your boost pressure your compression ratio you go down there is the trip option that has been given your tire pressure then the next option is your navigation you can see that like a compass then your media option then your safety options that are given on this thing so you can see all your blind spot warning front lane departure and all of that then you go to the detail settings vdc settings driver assistance the vdc is vehicle, vehicle dynamics so clock vehicle settings maintenance custom display custom display basically means like what you want to see on your display all the time so that you can change from here all of that and then you come to your main menu and that is about it that's how simple it is to use this information display that has been given on the driver's display so there's another button that is given out here that's for your safety system so you can press that which is the nissan intelligent mobility system so that you can switch on from here directly if you want to while you're on the move and one more thing is that this driver's display tends to be a little faded during the bright daylight that's the only thing but yeah, doesn't matter i'm most of the times concerned about my speed and that's in physical diet so that's all right now when you come to the steering wheel this is a leather covered steering wheel with the flat bottom and the nissan badging in the middle and it's also got the paddle shifters but you get a cvt box on this one so these paddle shifters are plastics and they are of good quality and pretty decently long and the steering wheel is manually adjustable which is your tilt and telescopic so you can find the right position and on the 
right side you would find the controls for your adaptive cruise control the safety systems nissan intelligent mobility button and your communication button voice control buttons all of that and on the left side you would find the buttons for your media controls and also the buttons to change the various settings on your driver's display so that is your steering wheel and when you come to the air conditioning controls you get physical buttons that are given on this thing and i'm glad that there is no touch screen on anything so straightforward buttons that are given out here so you switch it on and off from here in the middle that is the fan buttons that are given and on either side there are dials given to change your temperature so you get dual zone air conditioning system on this ultima and there are also buttons given to change the flow of air and everything and surprisingly there is also buttons given for your heated seat so this ultima gets the heated seat options for some reason in terms of the cooling the cooling effect is actually pretty good so the moment you sit in it just cools the car down pretty much quickly within like two to three minutes and you put it on full blast and actually when i put it on full blast also it's not that loud which is a good thing but the airflow is very good even when it's on full fan speed like the maximum fan speed but it's still not too bad now when i come to this infotainment screen you get a 12.3 inch colorful display on this ultima and there are also buttons that are given at the bottom along with the physical volume dial so i'm going to come to that later the infotainment screen itself is pretty refreshed now and the graphics are quite crisp and there is good detailing on them also so it's also pretty snappy i like that fact because usually these bigger screens are most of the times quite loaded and then they become pretty slow then there are these widgets that are given on your main screen you can even long press them and you can change the different widgets that are given on here you can shuffle them around you can change whatever you want add more screens also on your home screen and then you have this phone option your radio option your navigation and all these options on the other side then you go to your navigation so you get inbuilt navigation system on this ultima also and that's also pretty snappy and i like that like it's decently snappy and there are shortcut buttons at the bottom for your point of interest and everything then your next option is your entertainment option where you will find your sources so in terms of the connectivity you can connect to this infotainment system using bluetooth usb and there is wireless android auto and apple carplay wireless yep and the next option is your phone when you're connected to the phone you can see your dialing options your sms and all your information in here and at the bottom more apps settings that has been given in order to go into the detail settings there is another settings option given on top you go in there you will see your connections phone navigation sound system clock go to the other side camera apps so in terms of the sound you get both music system on this ultima it sounds kind of all right i, I expected a little more quality out of it but yeah it's, it's kind of decent i would say and there is also a drop down menu option where you will see your brightness you can adjust your bass treble all of that and also the sound settings from here it's all quick settings that you can do from here and that's your infotainment screen it's pretty smooth and again as i said it's pretty simple to operate also it's just you can figure it out very easily within a few minutes around 10 to 15 minutes and you're ready to use this infotainment screen and at the bottom as i mentioned there are buttons given for the brightness track changer volume and also a camera button so there are 360 degree camera system that has been given on this ultima i'm going to come to that later otherwise just let me just discuss that first so the 360 degree camera system is not very smooth and it's very grainy for yeah a car that's in 2023 the camera quality can definitely be improved especially when you have a good screen on this thing now when you come to the charging you get two usb ports one normal and one type c that has been given underneath the air conditioning controls 112 volt power socket there's also a wireless charger that has been given and there are also two more usb ports one normal and type c given for the rear passengers now on this new ultima you get a normal sunroof which is i mean decent yeah but it's yeah, this sun directly coming onto my eye but yeah you get the sunroof also you also get these sun visors that are extendable which is a pretty good thing so they cover your doors because as i said these doors are 
pretty long in that case there are also buttons given on the left side for your steering assist and all of that and also to open the boot door your trip co computer if you want to reset or if you want to change all of that those buttons are given on this side now when you come to this gear lever again that's also pretty handy and ergonomically very well placed so it's fairly easy to just put it into drive neutral reverse or in park then there is also this handbrake electronic handbrake that has been given now when you come to the storage you can put one and a half liter worth of bottle in the door cards and pretty slimmer storage at the back of it but yeah you can still put like one and a half liter worth of storage then there is this wireless charger where you can put your phones and wallet when they are charging but if they are not you can just utilize like that then you get two normal cup holders that are given out here then there is this glove box which is decently big even on the passenger side there is one and a half liter water storage that you can utilize then there is this center armrest that is leather covered with this white color stitching in the middle when you open that there is a tray that you can utilize to put your cards and stuff and underneath that you can easily put like six seven half a liter water bottles without this tray of course so even that is pretty big in the back again you can put like one and a half liter worth of bottle in both the rear door cards and some more smaller storage on the sides and in the hand rest you will get two normal cup holders for the rear passengers now on this top version of the ultima you get black color leather seats that are perforated but they are not the ventilated seats or anything they are definitely heated seats as i mentioned but they are just for the design purposes that has been given and these seats are pretty nice and broad but the bottom bit is not long enough i'm afraid yeah i feel my thighs lack a little bit of support that's the only thing but otherwise in terms of the comfort these seats are pretty comfortable the headdress are also decently comfortable i would say there's enough of back support and also the bottom bit has good amount of support and the only thing is that the driver side seat and even the passenger side seat feels a little on the higher side and you can't go very low in that sense like there is the adjustability option but you don't go too low so i usually prefer sitting a little lower down into the seats especially when it's a sedan because yeah, that gives you a good sort of feeling when you are sitting in there but yes that's that and in terms of the adjustability of these seats so the driver side seat is eight way electronically adjustable and two way lumbar control whereas the passenger side seat is four way electronically adjustable now the ultima has always been about being super spacious on the inside especially the rear seats and on this ultima that has also been carried on so you get good amount of space in here like when you see the knee room it's very huge the headroom that's about decent i would say although someone about six feet will start brushing their heads against the ceiling there's a bit of a curve that has been given so as to accommodate that additional head space out here and you can even slide your legs under the seats not too much but there is the scope for that that you can do during the longer journeys and out here again you sit quite high up uh, in terms of the seating position and in terms of these seats you get the black color leather seats which are perforated again for the design purposes they have white color stitching in here and they are pretty soft and comfortable in here too and in terms of the position it's decently comfortable i would say i have good amount of support underneath my thigh and my legs are kind of resting in a pretty comfortable position also that's also it even in the backrest it's pretty smooth there is also this middle seat and there's a bit of a tunnel that has been given out here although this is a front wheel drive but i get it's the rear wheel drive or all wheel drive sorry option that you get on this ultima and which is why there is this tunnel so when i sit in the middle the middle seat is actually pretty comfortable in here it's just the backrest that's a little harder that's the only thing but yes a passenger in the middle can also sit in here and when there is no passenger you can drop down this hand rest which is a little bit on the lower side and also it's also angled a little bit on the lower side so which is why your hands are resting a little bit on the lower side and you get these two normal cup holders that are given in the front but they are way ahead so you can still rest your hands while your drinks are also in here so at least this hand rest is utilize there are also child isofix points which are given in both these rear seats and in terms of the quality out here you get like normal plastic now out here yeah that's a little cheap plastic i'm afraid i we are going to be resting hands that's where it's leather covered with the white color stitching this glossy black 
plastic around these switches there are also two air conditioning vents that are given out here in the back again around that also normal plastic you can adjust adjust the flow of air and the direction of air and that's about it at the bottom of that there are two usb ports that are given and on the passenger side seat there is also this pocket storage that has been given there is also a sunglass holder that has been given out there in the front and even there the quality is kind of all right near those buttons and switches the plastic quality even out here at the bottom there's just normal quality of plastic and in terms of the door cards like you can put as i said one and a half liter worth of bottle and some more storage on the side but in terms of the seating it's pretty comfortable in here you are in a pretty relaxed position and then you get these very wide windows in here and they roll down completely so that's another useful feature and overall it's a pretty spacious and airy cabin experience that you get on this new nissan altima now this new nissan altima comes with two different engine options which is a 2.5 liter four cylinder naturally aspirated engine and the one that i'm driving this one comes in with a two liter four cylinder variable compression turbocharged engine that produces 248 horsepower and 370 newton meters of torque and this engine is mated to a extronic cvt transmission that sends the power to the front wheels there is also an all-wheel drive option that has been given on this ultima also but or not on this turbocharged version so in terms of the engine and the transmission itself the power delivery is very good like there's there's very bare minimum turbo lag on this thing and when you try to accelerate it's just there the power is always there it's never hesitant a little bit on the lower end that's the only thing but when you go it's a smooth powerhouse and plus with the cvt transmission it just improves your fuel efficiency also but a little noisy also at the same time so in terms of the efficiency from this system so you get on a daily basis in the city runabouts you will get anywhere between 10 to 11 kilometers per liter which is pretty good for a car this big whereas on a longer runs i've easily gotten up to 14 and a half kilometers per liter so that's a pretty good deal that you get with this one and plus it's a turbocharged engine so it will give you slightly better efficiency also plus a front wheel drive now on this cvt option there are also seven gears that are programmed but again that's a cvt so that's not going to be a lot of fun to shift around and plus there are no driving modes also as such on this thing so just have to just sit in this and start driving that's the only thing now when you come to the suspensions these are very smooth one on this ultima like when you're on the road it soaks up the bumps very well just on at lower speeds there are a bit of bumps that it takes a little while to iron out but once you start building up speed it's very smooth after that so in terms of that also is pretty comfortable so during longer journeys i'm going through these cat marks and yeah these these ones are pretty harsh that ways when you're driving in a car with a stiffer suspension but on this one it's got a very balanced suspension setup that's for sure now when you come to the steering again you get an electronic steering on this thing and it's calibrated quite well i would say although a little bit of feedback is lacking from this thing but nonetheless whatever you get from this is pretty good it's pretty pointy and it's never sluggish in that sense it's it's you know you get a decent amount of feedback from the system that when you're turning around and also the steering wheel itself is pretty light so it's fairly easier to use on a day-to-day -day basis now when you come to the brakes you get four disc brakes on this new ultima and in terms of the performance i found they were a bit on the softer side they were a bit spongy although the pedal setup is pretty progressive i would say so that's a good thing but yeah otherwise there's a bit of a yeah sponginess in terms of the action from the disc brakes itself but the action from the disc brakes but nonetheless the performance is pretty ample for day-to-day -day use now when you come to the noise and the vibrations the there's a bit of wind whooshing from these windows and that's about it otherwise it's a pretty quiet car and one more problem that i've noticed is when 
I'm kind of going at lower speeds. There's a bit of a sound that's coming from the air conditioning. It's probably from these uh, fans. I don't know what it is, but it's a very rattling noise that usually pops up. It's not coming up now for some reason, but it comes up when you are around that 1500 2000 rpm and when you're braking that's when it comes up let me put this car in the cruise control because you get the nissan pro pilot system on this thing so that's also pretty good and it's pretty clever that way you can adjust the distance and everything so yeah in terms of the noise and the vibrations that's the only thing because this car is fairly new and for that to have that rattling sound yeah that's a bit concerning sometimes but anyways it should be a simple fix like something is loose in the air conditioning vents that's about it now when you come to the safety systems you get six airbags two for the front driver and the passenger two side airbags again for the driver and the passenger there are also curtain airbags given in the frames there's also child isofix points in both the rear seats there is also a 360 degree camera system but the output from that as i mentioned is not that I wish that was a little smoother and not very grainy there's also blind spot warning system that has been given then there's also ABS there is also EBD there's also front and the rear collision warning there's also pro pilot assist there's also in that it includes the lane departure warning lane keep assist when you come to the pricing so the base variant which is the s variant comes in at 110000 dirhams it starts from the sv variant comes in at 120500 dirhams and then you can still customize and you can go upwards then this sr variant comes in at 136000 dirhams whereas the one that i'm driving the sl variant with a 2 liter turbocharged engine comes in at 146500 dirhams you have to go to the showroom to find the exact prices but this is nearly the prices that you would find even on their website so that's where i found these prices so in terms of that yes the turbocharged engine is slightly expensive and it's nearly there with all the other guys in fact it's even sometimes pricier than the competition but it's much more smoother it's much more daily usable and it's comfortable and the power delivery is actually pretty good for yeah turbocharged engine 2 liter otherwise it's pretty easy for it to get very stressed out very easily but on this one it's again decent and you get a cvt so you get good fuel economy from it it's also pretty spacious so space is never going to be an issue also it's pretty practical with all that boot space that you get so it's still that same ultima that is let's say practical it's spacious its styling can be a bit more yeah interesting in that sense because when you compare it to the competitors yeah they are quite ahead in that sense like they give you much better styling in terms of that but this one is more of your daily bread and butter model so you're just gonna get in drive do whatever you like and it's still gonna be around sticking around with you for your everyday use and that's the plus point of the ultima and that's why it's one of the leading mid-size sedans in his segment anyways that's pretty much it for this video give this video a thumbs up and thank you for watching this video and if you want to subscribe to my channel then you can click here and if you want to watch more videos then click here i shall see you in the next video bye bye take care and drive safe